Hey guys, this is Vince Team Moloth, and I'll be giving you my first impressions about the new adventure mode game type that's been in, uh, showing off at BlizzCon for Reaper of Souls. Uh, so basically, summarizing it up, I'll be putting the link for the actual article um, on Diablo, which shows you this mode and talks about it and gives you the lowdown. I'll also be summarizing it up as well as I talk about it. Um, again, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward actually. So adventure mode, all it is, is basically the campaign mode so that's not a campaign. It's just the entirety of the map open to you with all the waypoints open, no quest, no nothing, and you're able to farm it, no problem. Um, of course, there's a couple things that you can do as well within this if you're not just content with just farming. First thing is the bounties, and what the bounties do is that if you, um, there are randomized objectives that are only available in adventure mode. And these are, the bounties are completed by, like, sometimes you slay a unique monster, killing a boss, um, maybe a dungeon in particular, or an event. And once you do these, you'll receive, an, um, like, gold experience, but you also have a, a thing called a Rift Keystone. Now, Rift Keystones are quite important, I'll talk about them later, but another thing they've been talking about is power, powerful legendary items, which are unique to the system. Again, they said that they're talking about how that would work because again people would just farm the crap out of adventure mode and they get these awesome pops and legendary items in which they'll just abuse anyways the problem is though is that a um they can't make them too too strong without them actually playing the campaign or actually playing adventure mode if they just farm at bounties then they got a really strong weapon which may or may not be bound to account anyways um, it could probably be very messy and would cause the curve or difficulty curve for the game to go slightly more down and be super, super easy. Anyways, uh, back to the Rift Keystones. These Keystones are used for uh, Nephilim Rifts, and these were used to be called Loot Runs. But Nephilim Rifts are basically what PoE and Torchlight 2 have, which are called maps. And these are like randomized dungeons that, um, that have randomized uh, monsters and uh, different tile sets and layouts, lighting, whatever. It has a lot of random stuff, so you'd be fighting like Act 1 and Act 3 monsters on the pony level, or, or, or you know, whatever. And apparently these can be about 10 levels deep, which is pretty cool. Now, this is a very, very important thing because I feel like this added the end game that Diablo needed. It's almost there, like, it's almost perfect. Again, um, Diablo 3 is kind of motioning away from its gothic kind of darkness, but it's not, not, not that bad. I don't really care about the look of the game, I just want to make sure it's fun, right? So the Rift, Nephilim Rifts adds this perfectly by adding the maps at the very end game so um, people in normal could possibly find even better weapons. Again, this is very dependent on how the, the loot's going to work in this, because this is apparently going to be using the Elite 2.0 mechanic heavily. So if the maps do that, that would be really nice. And again, Nephilim Rifts will also have their own um, shrines. And you can have like invulnerability, uh, massive movement speed, and they, and I quote, a lightning aura that will one-shot any enemies who get within range. Which sounds absolutely awesome. Again, um, not again, but these shrines will be overpowered, so they will not be available in campaign. They are only in the, I, I quote, the self-contained environment of the Nephilim Rifts. So it's very, very rewarding. It sounds like it's very rewarding um, uh, game type, of course. And uh, it seems like they've been talking about the, uh, the monster density and how they can turn it up to make it super, super fun and have fun killing a lot of things. But it looks like from the gameplay video that I saw and some screenshots that I think that it'd actually be really fun. Um, though that, you know, you are playing randomized monsters in different settings, I feel like the, the monster density plus the monster types, like a lot of monsters have these passives like shielding and teleportation or vortex and whatnot. It'd be really cool to see that have these monsters densed up together. Of course, I'd like to see some sort of um, an affix or a power, power affix for the map itself, like PoE, where you have like double gold or something like that, or, or, um, more more damage for you, but you take more damage. You know, some of the random things that can change the map entirely, which makes them truly unique to, to, to one another. Instead of just being like, oh, you're playing Act 1 again, but you're fighting Act 3 monsters, or or something like that, right? Like, that's not exactly... It's, not, it's almost there. Again, they're not telling us everything, of course. It's only a first impression. Um, also, my big question is if, if Rift Keystones can be traded for the use of other players, so they can actually, you know, so 
the Rift Keystones could be traded to get you know better gear or whatnot. So maybe Rift Keystones will be the new currency, maybe? So yeah, Rift Keystones can be attained by doing bounties. However, they can also drop randomly anywhere in the world while in the adventure mode. So bottom line, I guess, this new mode will add the end game that Diablo needed. Again, it's not a huge, um, it's not a huge upgrade. It's not a huge improvement. It's more like a, like a band aid that you can just put on a, a bleeding wound. For Diablo three, it's not perfect, but it's good enough to keep to get the gears going. And hopefully, uh, this is not just the, the last feature that they'll be announcing. I, I'm, I'm sure that there'll be more to it. Like again, hopefully they'll talk about the ladder and the leaderboards and maybe about PvP, which would be really nice to have a PvP system will work and and such like that. But again, that'll be a probably a discussion from me later. But for now, Adventure Mode, I, pro I really, really like the idea of it. I just hope that um, the maps aren't just limited to just randomizing monsters, randomizing the look of the map, and that's it. I'd really like to see if the other affixes applied to all the, to the maps as well, uh, as a whole. That will affect you and the gameplay within that map. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. That was uh, my first question about the adventure mode for Reaper Souls. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.